in the previous lectures, we gave you a brief introduction of what acids and bases were. And now we're going to study uh, different reactions of acids and bases. Before moving on, let's uh, revise a few things. Let's uh, find out what which substances were acids. And remember, acids uh, were substances which produced H plus 1 ions when they were dissolved in water and had a pH which was less than 7. So we had a, we had a number of acids. The, uh, the first one was uh, hydrochloric acid. And whenever it's dissolved in water, it's going to produce... Uh, it's going to produce H plus 1 ions, uh, aqueous, and Cl minus 1 ions, aqueous. So this is uh, hydrochloric acid. Then you had nitric acid, which was HNO3. And that was also aqueous. So it produced uh, H plus 1 ions in aqueous state. And NO3, which minus 1 nitrate ions in aqueous state. Similarly, you had uh, H2SO4, which was sulfuric acid. And when it's aqueous, dissolved in water, it's going to ionize and it's going to produce two H plus one ions and one SO4 minus two ion. And we also have uh, phosphoric acid, which is H3 and PO4. And when it's aqueous, it's going to produce uh, three H plus one ions in aqueous state and one PO4 minus three ions in aqueous state. And we also have uh, most all of these were strong, uh, strong acids. And what we meant by strong acids were they completely ionized when they were dissolved in water. Then you had some weak acids. Weak acids were, uh, there was carbonic acid, H2CO3 aqueous. And carbonic acid, when you, the term weak acid means that it, it does not ionize completely. For example, if you have 10 molecules of H2CO3, only one or two are going to ionize. So H2CO3, when it ionizes, it's going to produce two H plus one ions in aqueous state and one CO3 minus two ion in aqueous state. And lastly, you had uh, a number of organic acids, which were, which were also termed as weak acids. So you had all these organic acids, which were weak acids. And remember, an organic acid, I'm not going to write, uh, we're going to study organic acids in a lot of detail when we study organic chemistry. So organic acids, uh, when, it, when they are aqueous, organic acids have COH in it. R is some molecule or some uh, other part of the molecule that I'm not drawing because uh, there are many types of R's over here. So let's say that R represents a chain or a branch or a part of a molecule. So it's RCOH and when it's aqueous, it's going to break down into RCOO minus one, aqueous and, and H plus one, aqueous. Now moving on to bases, uh, we've discussed previously that uh, all metal oxides and hydroxides were bases. Now if it's an oxide, then it's a metal uh, cation, which is attached to O-2. And if it's a metal hydroxide, then it's a metal cation attached to OH minus 1. Apart from these uh, bases, we have one other thing which is a base, and that is ammonia, which is NH3. Now, NH3 could either be a gas or it could be an aqueous state. So, NH3 is a base, and uh, in addition to NH3, there's a similar compound called NH4OH, which is ammonium hydroxide. That is also a base. Now, uh, since we're dealing with bases, uh, there was uh, there are some bases which are soluble in water, and those bases are called alkalies. Now, alkalies are simply soluble bases or bases that dissolve in water. Now, which substances were alkalies? Uh, group one metals. Group one metal hydroxides 
they were all athletes and those include for example NAOH, NAOH is uh, can dissolve in water similarly you have KOH it also is capable of dissolving in water so all group 1 metal hydroxides they will dissolve in water similarly you had uh, some group 2 as well that you that dissolved in water and that those include uh, barium hydroxide now uh, a few group 2 ones also dissolved in water so barium hydroxide dissolves in water as well as CaOH2 which is calcium hydroxide but it only dissolves calcium hydroxide dissolves partially in water so so we can say that it's a partial alkali so it's going to partially dissolve in water so and in addition to uh, these two group 1 and group 2 there was one other alkali which was NH4OH so NH4OH is also an alkali so when we talk about alkalis these are all these are the only metal oxides and hydroxides which are alkali so so we need to remember these group 1 metal hydroxides they're all alkalis some of the group 2 metal hydroxides are alkalis notably barium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide and you had ammonium hydroxide which is also an alkali and remember one thing when you when um, whenever you have an alkali for example NaOH and whenever that dissolves in water it's in aqueous form then it's going to produce Na plus 1 and OH minus 1 ions so it's in aqueous form if you have uh, ammonium hydroxide NH4OH and if it's in aqueous form it's going to produce NH4 plus 1 in aqueous form and OH minus 1 which will also be in aqueous form now moving on to reactions of uh, acids and bases uh, we're going to uh, start uh, studying those reactions now the number one reaction is uh, this one a metal is going to react with an acid and it's going to produce a salt and it's going to produce hydrogen gas so this is the first reaction and uh, let's uh, give you a brief example of what this reaction would look like it's going to be let's take any acid for example we have HCl hydrochloric acid and we have a metal which is uh, let's say sodium metal so these two are going to react now I told you previously what a salt was a salt is simply it's an acid without the H the H is replaced by the metal so if I replace the H in the acid by the metal cation which is sodium I will get NaCl and Na had a charge of plus 1 Cl had a charge of minus 1 so the charges cancel out plus you're going to get hydrogen gas and the last thing you need to do is you need to balance this equation so you need uh, you need 2 H and this would be the balanced equation but uh, and similarly let's let's do another example for example if you have uh, if you have uh, let's say calcium reacting with let's say H3 PO4 now the salt in this case is going to be the hydrogen is going to be replaced by the metal cation which is so the salt is going to be PO4 and it is minus 3 that's the phosphate ion and the hydrogen ions are replaced by the metal cation which is Ca plus 2 now I need to balance the charges and the only way the charges can be balanced is if I have 3 calciums then the charge on 3 calcium is going to be plus 6 and if I have 2 phosphates then the charge on 2 phosphates is going to be minus 6 and the charges cancel out so we can cut out the charges we don't we don't need to write so it's going to be Ca3 PO4 2 plus one other thing is going to be produced which is hydrogen gas H2 and the last thing is I need to balance everything and uh, the only way that is possible there, there are two phosphates over here so I need two H3PO4 there's one three calciums over here so calcium ions so there should be three calcium atoms over here and lastly you have six hydrogens over here so it's going to be three H2 let's do another reaction for example if you have uh, if you have sodium reacting with H2 SO4 now 
when sodium is reacting with H2SO4, this is going to be the H ions, the salt is going to be produced when the H ions are going to be replaced by the sodium ion. So it's SO4 minus 2 and you, you're going to have sodium next to it, sodium is plus 1. So to balance the charges you would need how many sodiums? You would need 2 sodiums. So it's going to be Na2SO4 plus there's going to be a hydrogen gas produced over here and I need to balance this. So there are two sodiums over here. There should be two sodiums over here as well. So now this is a balance equation. I can write down the names of all the salts as well. Um, since this is the chloride ion, this salt over here is sodium chloride. This salt over here is calcium phosphate and this one is sodium sulfate. So so let's uh, move on and do a few more questions just to make sure that you're getting everything right. Uh, let's take another uh, element. Let's take the let's take aluminium, and uh, it's reacting with nitric acid, which is HNO three. Now again, aluminium forms uh, the H in the acid is going to be replaced by the aluminium, and that's how the salt is going to be formed. So it's going to be NO three nitrate minus one. And you, you'll have the aluminium ion replacing the H plus 1 ion. So the only way that is possible is you need to balance the charges now. So there should be there should be 3 NO3 ions so that the charge on 3 NO3 ions is going to be minus 3. And uh, the minus 3 and plus 3 is going to cancel out. So it's AlNO3 bracket 3 plus hydrogen gas is going to be produced. I need to balance this. There are 3 nitrates. So there should be, there should be 3 HNO3s. And since there are three hydrogens over here, so there should be three over two hydrogen molecules on this side. Hopefully, reaction one is clear. There is one important point when we are uh, reacting metals and acid and it's producing salt and hydrogen. The important point is um, that only metals. more reactive than hydrogen atom are going to have this reaction. So remember there's only metals which are more reactive than hydrogen are going to have this reaction. So if you haven't studied reactivity series, I'll give you a very brief idea of the reactivity series. Uh, uh, the reactivity series uh, orders the reaction from most reactive to least reactive. So if I draw the reactivity series from most reactive to least reactive, it's going to look like this. It's going to be K N A C A M G E L Z N F E B H A U and now, if you look over here carefully, these are metals which are which are less reactive than hydrogen. So, metals which are less reactive than hydrogen, they do not take plus, take part in the reaction which I have mentioned above. So, if you have a reaction, for example, copper reacting with HCl. Now, if you have a reaction like this, copper is reacting with HCl. Now, it's a metal plus acid reaction, but since copper is less reactive than uh, hydrogen, so you need to remember all these four metals which are less reactive than hydrogen. So, since copper is less reactive than hydrogen, this reaction is not going to take place. The same can be said for other metals, for example, silver and let's say HNO3, metal plus acid, it's, it's again not going to take place. It's, it's, there's going to be no reaction taking place in this case. So remember this point uh, that 
these reactions, the ones that we studied before, are only possible for metals which are more reactive than hydrogen.